Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio here in our step-by-step -step to Mega Base series. In the past few episodes we built this monstrosity right here and I really like it I have to say but I have considered a couple of my decisions mostly because you voiced your opinion and well in certain regards you're absolutely right. For me, in my mind, the big picture is that this here is an entire module and I want to fill up the empty spots with solar panel arrays. However, if you think about it, it would be way more practical to have one station right here in the center, for instance, and the other one at the top. This way, we wouldn't have to use an enormous amount of belts to actually make things work. You see, the argument that convinced me in the end is that the more belts and inserters you have, the more the game suffers in the long run. So we might be fine with a mega base just with 1000 signs per minute, for instance. But once we scale this up, having stations like this all over the place might not be the best idea. So I'm going to come up with an alternative design that we could use for this, and it might actually even turn out better. So if you have been building along with me, you can still keep this. This is totally legitimate if you don't want to scale things up to, let's say, 10,000 signs per minute or whatever. But I want to take this world as far as it can go, and I will also provide the blueprints. I actually made a blueprint book right here with all the blueprints that I have so far or that I consider finished, and I'm going to be updating that all the time. So there should be a link in the description with the string of this blueprint book, and I will be updating this every time I add another blueprint to it. I also already copied out our unloading and loading stations from the trains. We can still use most of the designs there. And then I made some other removal tools. For instance, I can now remove buildings with this blueprint without destroying the nature. Or with this blueprint, I should be able to pick up all the items that are on the floor. By the way, in order to rebuild the station, I want to prevent new ores from incoming and we're just going to smelt everything we currently have. So I will probably have to complete some more belts here. Let me actually see. It's more visible on the map. Everything that is purple. Okay, it looks about right. We just need to complete this part right there. And then all of the iron plates can continue. And this is what I've been talking about. Look at that. Just looks amazing. Yeah, I really liked the idea of this, but I don't want to run into troubles just because I didn't think about things properly. And if the Factorio audience wants some efficiency, I can definitely provide that. And I want to provide that because my goal is to take this to an absolute insane level. So now we're basically just smelting up everything we have so that we can remove it easily without all the ores getting in the way. Now let me try to introduce the new concept because the stations are completely going to change. Well, we're just going to move them around a little bit. First of all, I want to get things started with a rail that just goes straight through everything. Then we can probably take an unloading station. Let's set it up somewhere here. We'll have to move this around a little bit because now we are actually not going out this way, but we might be going out to the right side. So we would be combining two belts like so, and then we can copy this over for each of the sets. I then would like to see a second rail and looking at this, can we maybe fit this in here and still make it look good? Yeah, actually we can. If we do something like that, we can then use this part to underground belt out of it over the tracks. I kind of like that idea, so let's copy this over for the next part. The middle ones are actually getting into each other's way. So let's forget about that and just build the track one out because space is the one thing we're definitely not lacking. Now we're also going to switch up the design here a little bit. This design is still going to be usable for every material that has a long crafting time. But for every material that has a shorter crafting time, we're now going to go with an 8 beacon setup and a belt weaving pattern. An 8 beacon setup works like so. We have the furnace here. The beacon touches the furnace with its corner. And this is going to allow us to set up four beacons on this side. And then the fifth one would be for the next furnace. So the furnaces are directly next to each other. And we get in as many beacons as we can. Of course, the same thing on the other side. The beacons would be right there. And then we could basically go ahead and copy this over four times in order to get four lines. Of course, this would be a little bit longer in the end. But my main purpose right now is to try and align them. So I got my four rows here. We can copy this over. Now, let me see. I don't think there is a perfect center, right? Because this would be the center. No, there is actually a perfect center. So we can just do it like so. Maybe I'm going to put it two out to give the rail a little bit more breathing room. 
but essentially we can now lead each of the lines into their respective furnace row and not only that but we can do it in an extraordinarily symmetrical way. Now we basically have one train station dedicated to four lines just like we have at the very top but instead of doing that we can build one station after another and whenever we need more iron we can just do that. Now there's going to be one issue with this. If we want to tile this of course then we have the same lines here so we would have another line another track and then before each station we would lead the train into the track and the other trains would continue on the same line there i think instead i'm gonna be using this track so this is gonna be my straight line all the trains are going straight and whenever they arrived at the station they need to go to they can use this track and this is not gonna be connected to the previous one and then whenever the trains leave the station they will be going into this track that means incoming trains can go straight without hindrance, they can go into their station and then they will go to a dedicated line going out of the situation. The problem about this is it is not really tileable in the way I would like to because I would like to tile the beacons of course and this curve just comes way too soon. So alternatively what we could do is have our unloading station facing this way. Actually that might be a much better solution. Say we have our unloading station right there instead. The trains can just take a curve right there and other trains going straight can still do that. This also means we don't have to do anything jiggly here with the balancer and we can have this one going straight. So I'm gonna put this a little further down, like about right there. I think we can move the station a little bit closer. Yeah, that is totally fine. And now we can just hop over the tracks like so and then distribute the iron ore. Move this one block over, looking very good. Yeah, I don't think it will get any more orderly than this. Therefore, let's maybe think about the setup here. I'm gonna have to split this over and we can now use two red belts. There, a little bit more space, that is better. Now I can move over here and there. And we can use red underground belts in order to do the first part of the weaving pattern. Oh, hang on. This needs to move over a little bit, of course. There we go. Now I can have it there and there in order to reach these two machines. The next belt would be going here and there to get these two and so on and so forth. In total for that process with about 8 beacons per machine we're gonna be needing 12.8 so 13 to 14 machines. I think I'm just gonna go with 14 and that would be 10 and 1 2 3 4 and then if we continue the beacons here uh, looking at this we can also go with 13 right because we will already get slightly more than we need with 13. For some reason I thought it will add up a little bit better with the beacons but 13 also adds up just as well. Good now continue the belt pattern here until we reach the very end and this would be the way we pick up the ore. On the other side we can have the very same thing just like that and then we only need a way to get the ore out of the furnaces and we can get this started right here by bringing them onto blue underground belts. And now we are just gonna use the other edges of the furnaces in order to extract all the items onto blue belts. Something along these lines is already gonna do the trick we can copy this over like so and then at the very end we would be joining the two blue belts together of course. Before we continue building all of this I want to make sure that I actually have a structure with all the modules already planned out. So let's fill the beacon up with speed modules and we can just copy it over. And this would now be the blueprint for us to get four entire blue belts. Good, now this is perfectly symmetrical. I'm gonna remove the rails until the beacon and this beacon here. So let's keep that in. And I should be able to just copy this over now. And this should be a perfectly nice module. Whenever we are lacking the iron, we just set up another one by overlapping the beacons here. Before we continue this, we probably want to make sure that each red belt also has a fast inserter and then the blue belts need inserters pointing out. And then we should be able to just copy this over for each set. Finally, we need a bunch of power poles at every red and blue belt interval. Good, now we can just make sure to copy this over for each of the stations. And if we have a look at this, this is now using only 112 underground belts, but it is also obviously using way more inserters. So now the only thing we have to take care of is to balance this once again. The balancer at the beginning isn't actually necessary, but I figured we do have the space for it. The balancer at the very end is way more important so we can load the train evenly. 
Before we continue this with the loading station, I want to make sure that I have the exact ratio. So I'm going to copy over one of the designs and I'm quickly going to make my way back to the base in order to restock on some materials. I'm going to place one of these modules right here and then I think we just have to fill it up with a little bit of iron. I can just grab a stack and distribute it amongst the furnaces and then theoretically I should see the ratios. Yeah, so we want to make sure we power this up and then also get the beacons built. Let's check the ratio without these two outer beacons. I just want to see that. So it's only 40. Oh, that might be because we're missing the productivity modules, of course. Something else I changed in my Spidertron is to get the exact number of solar panels and accumulators that I need to build one city block. So now one of these modules I can build in one go, which is very nice, including the pathway. At the moment, my robots are going all over the place. I think it's time to introduce some more. I'm going to build 100 more logistics robots, which will then give us a total of 300 for just the base here. But we can see on the right side here, all 200 current logistics robots are busy. Well, that's already crafted. Let's place them. Ah, this is just the best. I improved the situation slightly here with crafting the productivity modules. This way we will be able to scale things up a little bit. Good, I should have enough modules to finish this now. And we can see the exact ratio we would have, which is 45.075. Now, if I remove these two beacons, let me actually see if that is still the case. Yeah, look at that. So we can actually have a very nice looking design and get slightly over the 45 items we can carry with the blue belt. That means I can get rid of all of these beacons and the rest is already good. So now that we know a little more about the dimensions, we're just going to flip this with F. I'm going to put it right here for now and then just flip this part like so. We get a balancer just before that and then make sure we join each of the lines into the balancer. This gives us the opportunity to put everything here one more block or one more rail block over. And that of course means right here we're gonna have our loading station. Let's get one of these loading stations going. We would have to have them on this side. Well, we only have to have the train station on the right side. Everything else we could flip over. Let's actually do that for symmetry's sake. To flip vertically we have to hit the G button. And then we should be able to align this. I forgot the last row of inserters here. But there we go. That's replaced and get rid of this rail. Looking good. We can now connect these quite easily. And then I guess all that's missing is the occasional light. Can we distribute this evenly? Wait a second. I misplaced the power poles here. Oh gosh, this blueprint needs to be perfect. What am I doing? Yeah, I think I fixed the power situation. And now we can take the entirety of the module and we would be able to tile it just like that. And it would just work. This way, however, we can only fit one train into the station at any given time. Then one last thing we have to do is hook this up to power, which I think I'm just going to do like that and do the same thing on the other side. Now everything is powered up and I should be able to make a blueprint out of this. Let's go ahead and do that. Here we can now see the entire cost of the module and all we have to do is hook it up to a network. I'm going to call this one smelter module. I'm going to create that blueprint and I'm going to be saving that somewhere here. I can even create a copy of this and then we're going to add it to the blueprint book here that you can download. Now that we have a blueprint of this, I'm going to disassemble it and then we build it where it actually needs to go. Right here, all the stations that have finished smelting, I can just go ahead and pick up. This is going to give us a whole bunch of materials back. And now all of these belts and rails belong to me again. Now let's say this is still going to be our main axis going from north to south, but then we can have our other axis going this way. So I will be moving the entire section up a little bit and this would then allow us to place the module here at the same spot. And then we just keep going to the left in order to do the copper one and one more to the left in order to do the steel one. This means we're not going to be expanding downwards, but over to the left side. I'm going to lend my construction robots very briefly to another system here. This way I don't have to clog up my inventory and I can still take apart everything that I need to take apart. And then all the items are just going to be stored right here. I just want to avoid picking up the ore because I really have no use for that. Oh, and I totally forgot. So the main reason I did it is because I was running low on power with building or taking apart so many things in one go. Don't get me wrong, it is still quite an endeavor, but uh, totally possible thanks to my trusty robots. 
wonderful i am back and as you can see i deconstructed mostly everything now it's time to add the blueprint i think from the main line i want to be at least on the third block here so this is where i would add the smelter module and if we can oh no it cannot actually be centered so I think I'm going to have it closer to the left side and then I'm going to move it up to here. That should be good. And that is going to be the position of our module. Now, if we really wanted to, we could elongate this rail right here and then allow two trains to actually wait for it. But I think for now, what I would like to see is a couple of blueprints for my rails. For instance, something like that could be a blueprint. This would just be a straight rail. And then I can just add another one like so. The two middle lines are just for trains that travel through without using the module. And then as of this point, I want to add additional lines. One line right here is going to be dedicated to the fuel station. And actually looking at this, we don't even need the second line. Just one line going to the fuel is going to be enough. And then other trains using the module will be using that one. Other trains going not to the module will be using the inner rail. So now we'll have to come up at this point. This is going to be a one-way system. So we only have to make sure that we actually get the tracks inside. To get to this next station, let's see what we have to come up with. Either we use this rail or we use this rail and come up at this point. This is an intersection either way. So we could do something like that to allow these trains into here. I can then go ahead, make my way down here. And we want to join up with this rail. This would be obsolete. There's one more connection missing from this rail here. And then at the very end of the contraption, we go to four lines again in order to initiate the copper smelting. So now the only unsolved issue is the fueling station. I guess we want to take that and actually flip it over. You know, in order to fix the symmetry issue, what we could do is just move this one block over. Will you look at that? This totally fixes the symmetry issue. And we can also make our comeback into the main line here. In this case, we either go into this direction or we go a little further down over into actually we want to use the inner rail so about here and we want to do the same thing over here and by the way i mean centered from this rail to this rail i don't mean this guy here is centered in the city block the city block doesn't matter i'm going to redo the tiling according to the module in the very end the city blocks just help me align everything better now the fueling line, I think I'm just going to go ahead and continue. And wherever we need it, we're going to add another station. Maybe to make things less confusing, I'm going to remove the fueling line and also add it to the other lines because the fueling isn't going to happen very frequently. That means I could align it with this station, for instance, and we're just going to use this incoming line to hook it up. All we want is one wagon for whatever fuel type we're using. So that is now going to be our fueling station. We can just drag this all the way up and make sure this will then also be part of the blueprint. If we add one space here, then we can actually do it without adding additional power poles. Okay, nice. I should be able to update my blueprint. Select new contents right here. And then let's make sure we get all the right contents. Oh, I don't know. We might have to redo this again once we have the signaling. So now if I copy this over, then we're still missing the rails and the signals. Yeah, we can quite easily add those. To do the fueling on the other side, we're just going to do a loop in the other direction. And I'm going to set up the station the same exact way. We'll have to copy this over without the station because otherwise we cannot flip it. And I should be able to add that right here. And we have to do the same thing here with the belts. Get this all the way up to a little something like this. So that we can still add a inserter. And then move the line all the way up to the same spot where we have the rail here. Because this is the division to the next module. Good. Now I'm just going to do the signaling part. I'm then going to make another blueprint out of it that you can download in today's episode. And we're then just going to come back quickly in order to see whether or not everything is working out. Alrighty, yeah, I'm finally done with everything. I now have two blueprints so I can easily rebuild this. The first one is the start module, which is basically this entire section. So I can just copy this over for my copper solution on the left side and then continue with that. Maybe slightly adapted for the steel version. 
I then also have the normal smelter module that I can just attach here on the top and everything should already be signaled and ready. The only thing I will still have to do is name the stations and maybe change the circuit settings. As a matter of fact, we should be able to get this running already by just renaming this. This is going to be my unload iron ore station. And if I'm not mistaken, a train should already be on its merry way. And um, did I hook this up? Oh yeah, of course, I first have to enable the condition. So if it's below, let's say 10,000, I don't want to go overboard here. Then we should have a train on its way. And that is actually the case. Wonderful. Now, if I realize that we don't actually have enough space with just one train, then I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit larger. But we'll see about that in the future. The next starter module shouldn't start too soon. So we still have the space to do so if we wanted to. So maybe I would be starting it right over here. We definitely want to leave enough space so we can have heavy train traffic without issues. Wonderful. Now we have our ore incoming and another train is already on its way. That means we can hook it up. This is probably a mistake in my module now. Okay. But now we can smelt everything at the maximum speed right here. And we should get a fully compressed belt as soon as this is done smelting the first parts. There we go. Four compressed belts. Well, almost completely compressed belts. Uh, this looks pretty much compressed. Yeah, I think it just... No, there are actually occasional spots. We might be able to solve that by switching some of these to stack inserters. Either way, whenever I update the blueprint, you're gonna get the newest version in the newest episode and it's always gonna be the same file and you can just copy over the blueprint string. Very nice. I like it. This is a much better solution. I agree with you. I did like my previous solution too, but let's be a little bit more practical. And I'm going to promise you that I'm going to try to keep that up instead of going for the craziness that I usually go for. But yeah, to be honest, this is way more practical. With that out of the way, have a great time. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye bye.